Hey Shagheads, Curtis Tucker here, aka Shags, with another episode of A Shaggy Duck Life. Thank you guys so much for checking in. More behind the scenes of working here in the plains of the United States of America from Enid, Oklahoma. I own my own business. I'm an entrepreneur. I do all kinds of fun things, have a couple of side businesses, a couple of uh, projects going, podcasting, things like that. And so this is kind of the behind the scenes of uh, Shaggy Duck Studio. So welcome uh, back. If you guys have listened before, if you have not listened, thank you guys for being here. I would love to connect with you guys. You can email me at shags at shaggyduck.com. You guys can go to youtube.com slash Curtis Tucker TV and I have a YouTube channel there, and I just went over 500 subscribers. You guys, thank you a million for subscribing, if you've been subscribing over there. If you're listening to this podcast, just uh, the audio version, you can go over there. The videos, uh, I mean, if you like listening or watching videos, uh, one of these days I'm going to try to make the videos a little more exciting right now. It's just me talking, doing the podcast, but I just wanted to give you guys a uh, another avenue to listen to the podcast so appreciate you guys over there and what else do i need to i uh, got pay, uh, a patreon account you guys can go to patreon.com slash shags uh, s-h-a-g-g-s and if you sign up for the five dollar plan you'll get uh, a whole bunch of stickers and a um, uh, coaster, but here's like one of the, here's the official Shags sticker, so um, all kinds of stuff, and I almost hate to pick up the the phone, but I was going to show you, I think I probably mentioned last week that uh, I had purchased a full-blown, full-sized, uh, seven-foot surfboard and it is sitting over there uh, in the corner in my studio blank and I've got a whole bunch of ideas going on and so uh, eventually I will use um, some paint pencils and I will be doing uh, some pop art on there. I've decided I'm going to try to concentrate on doing some pop art and uh, instead of doing pop art on canvases I'm going to be doing my pop art on objects and so after the surfboard I'm not sure what I'll work on next, but uh, once I get it going, I, I'll show you guys some progress and stuff like that. So just to have a million things uh, in the works, uh, probably too many things. I always get too many things going. That's one of my problems. If you guys, if you're an entrepreneur or you do things on the side, uh, you may be like, my, like me where uh, you get too many things going at once and you just can't uh, get them all going. And that's where I'm at right now. I've just got too many ideas, too many things going. Uh, Todd and I, we not only do the 70s Buzz podcast, but we also do a second podcast called uh, Buzzhead Radio. And Buzzhead Radio used to be a radio, an internet radio station and podcast. And then uh, we discontinu discontinued both for a little while. We started the podcast back up, and now I found a really good platform. And so we're going to turn the radio station back on. So Buzzhead Radio will be back on air as an internet radio station. Well, the new platform lets you play copyrighted music because they cover the costs and then you just pay a monthly fee. And so we are going to start a 70s radio station with a twist. And the twist is there's going to be, you know, late 60s, um, some independent music, uh, clips from some of our podcasts, not full-blown podcasts, but just some clips, uh, and then just all kinds of other fun stuff. And a lot of it will be, uh, you know, retro, 70s related, fun fun stuff. It will be a fun radio station to listen to, so I will let you guys know when that is officially back on the air, and uh, I'm getting the playlist together right now, so it's going to have lots of fun 70 songs. So this week's uh, A Shaggy Duck Life episode, uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to title it yet, so I don't know uh, what the title is going to be, but what happened this week is uh, today I am recording this on June 9th. Well, I believe it was on June 7th. Um, well, let me go all the way back to the beginning. So uh, I got out of college and uh, worked a job, dated, uh, but somewhere along the lines, just a few years out of college, I decided I wanted to work out and stay in shape. And so I started working out 
and I graduated in 86. So, so let's just round it off and let's just say 90. So from basically from 1990 until now, I have always worked out. I have, uh, in the beginning, I went heavy with weights. I did a lot of boxing type stuff, heavy bag, speed bag uh, in the beginning. And then I kind of converted to weightlifting and throughout the mid to late 90s. Um, and so, you know, I'd go to the gym every day, went to the gym every day, and I would do an hour of weightlifting and then probably 30 minutes of aerobics. And uh, this continued on a while. Uh, and then as I got a little older, I dropped back, um, cut down the weightlifting and upped the amount of aerobics I was doing. And, and I was always going to a gym. So I was, you know, there were diff different gyms that I would go to. Uh, and, but this was basically, you know, so it was one of those deals where Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I did upper body. And then Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday was lower body. And then Sunday was, uh, you know, I don't even remember, but just a lot of uh, weightlifting, a lot of heavy lifting. Um, I think I'd gotten up to where, you know, if the conditions were just right, I could bench press 300, um, you know, but I was working out with, you know, easily 225, uh, just spinning it, just doing a lot of reps, probably too much, uh, you know, and all that. But anyway, so it kind of got me into this lifestyle of wanting to stay in shape and, and working out a lot. So, but again, as I got older, the, you know, eventually the weightlifting went down to 30 minutes and the aerobics was up to an hour. Um, because as you, uh, so I'm 59. And so if you're listening to this and you are much younger than 59 or a little bit younger than 59, I have to warn you that the older you get, the harder it is to burn off the fat. And it goes, you know, for guys, it pretty much goes straight to the belly. And so, you know, you can gain six pounds just really quick. Well, that's pretty much six pounds of fat on your stomach. You know, your, your neck will get a little bit thick. And, and so, um, so I decided, you know, to try to stay in shape, not thin, but just try to stay in shape. And, and so I kind of continued that routine. And then, uh, you know, eventually, I decided to buy my own equipment, and so I was uh, working out at home, had some weights at home, and, and eventually had a treadmill and an elliptical. And so every morning, what I would do is I'd get up in the morning, and I would do uh, an hour of elliptical or um, treadmill, and then I'd go to the gym for 30 minutes, until, or I would work out, you know, do, do weights at home. And then I can't, and I don't really remember the exact time or whatever, but at some point I decided that uh, aerobic was, you know, what I needed at, at the age that I'd gotten to. I'm sure I was in my fifties. And so, um, and so it, it just kept evolving. So, so, so up until um, 2015, so, so in the house that I'm in right now, uh, the first time that we lived in this house, and so I do have an episode uh, explaining why I'm now living in this house a second time. But so the first time that we moved into this house um, in Enid in a area called Indian Hills, we lived here and in 2014, the city of Enid have built uh, a trail system where uh, a walking trail and they were trying to so the plan there's this master plan to make this walking trail running trail go all the way around Enid and all over Enid so you could literally get on it and, and go to every any part of town just by walking riding a bike skateboarding or whatever and so uh, because I do Enid Buzz uh, in 2014 when they kind of opened they they built a part over here in our neighborhood and it's it's three blocks away from my house and then it it's really close to a huge bridge that goes over a drainage ditch so i mean they they spent a lot of money this is like you know wide enough for you know multiple people you know i mean it's just a big big uh, walking trail uh big cool bridges and everything and and then a whole workout area and kids play area and bathrooms, you know, that, that are pretty close to our house. So, so I went out and I covered the day that the mayor 
went out on the trail. This was in 2014. The mayor went out on the trail and it was kind of a kickoff. And so I went and I covered it and I kind of looked at it and, you know, I saw the, the big bridge and everything. And, the, and then I did a story on it and didn't think much about it. And so uh, from 2014 until 2015, um, I w we were in this house and there was an, a, a room like this one across my back courtyard and it was it had a, a glass wall that um, my wife's grandparents had built and in that room is where I had my treadmill and my elliptical and uh, at that point this space that I'm in right now my office this was just outdoors and this was a grilling area and so at that point I was doing I believe an hour of aerobic in the morning, I would switch, you know, whichever one I wanted to do. And then in the evening, I would run over to the YMCA and I would do 30 minutes of weightlifting. Or I think maybe I was I would run and do 30 minutes of weightlifting and then come home and do the aerobic, I, something like that. Anyway, that, you know, I was basically kind of doing that. And then, and I don't even know why, but um, in June of 2015, Oh, I heard uh, somewhere, you know, being Enid Buzz, uh, getting the news that they had built a new mile onto the walking trail that was two, three blocks from my house. And they said it went from this one street a mile west. Well, that basically took you to the last main crossroad in Enid, Oklahoma. And basically, once you go past that road, you're out of town. You're you're off into another, you know, going towards another town. And so I was like, wow, that's, that's way out there. And so um, for some reason, I decided one morning, and it just happened to be that morning was June 7th, 2015. I decided to, uh, by then we had, uh, you know, mobile devices. I had my iPhone. I decided to go out on the trail and go find that new stretch and go on it and you know take some pictures and find out what it was all about. So that morning, um, and I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of assuming maybe it was a Saturday morning. Uh, I'm not really sure, but uh, so I but I work out every single morning, and so so that morning, June seventh, twenty fifteen, I took off out on the trail, and so basically it's three blocks from my house to, you know, where I'm closest to the trail, you get on the trail, you cross the bridge, and then you're at a main uh, road in Enid, and then you go a mile, and then you're at another uh, significant street, and then you go another mile, and then you're at that street that kind of is pretty far out there. So, so it's basically two miles of walkway, you know, once you get past all this stuff in, in our neighborhood. But even even in on the miles, the the trail doesn't go straight. It it curves back and forth, which makes it actually longer than a mile because the, it just adds length to it. And so so basically, I got on the trail, and I went from the first street to the second street, which I probably I think I'd been on that before. Or I had at least seen it. And it's kind of cool because uh, as you're going west, everything, well, to the south of you is a big wheat field. And then to the north of you is the back of a uh, housing addition. So there's the back of all these houses. And then about midway, you get to a railroad track. And after the railroad track, there's a bunch of trees and it's real shady and, and kind of covered. And then you get to the next road. And so, so I... I went that direction. There wasn't a whole lot going on. I was taking some pictures of the wheat and stuff. And then I got to that that second street, which then a mile and and some would go out to the, the furthest street. And that was a stretch I hadn't been on. And so I, I got on that and I got going, well, there's no housing out there. And at the time, at the time that I started, there was nothing out there. And that morning, you know, I go early. I got, I, at that time, I think I was going at 6. I was leaving the house and on the trail at 6. Now, I usually don't get on the trail until 6.20. Don't I? It just things kind of have kind of evolved. And basically, I leave the house at 6.20 and I return at 8. So I'm really hour and 40 minutes is how long I'm out. Uh, but so, so I started on that, that last mile 
and it was it's just flat there's no houses there's no buildings there's no trees there's nothing in your way it's just open sky and and there's one wheat field that's just really really big and it kind of goes slopes up and and then and then you can't see what's behind it so it looks like it's a wheat field that goes forever and man i got out there and it was blue skies it was sunny i don't think there was a lot of wind it was just a beautiful day and i was like OMG, this is like the coolest thing in the whole world. And again, I was out there early enough that there was nobody there. So I was taking pictures. There were squirrels. There was rabbits. Um, you know, there was just fun little wildlife out there. And, uh, you know, so I kept going. And then about midway between the two main streets of this last section, there's a pond out there. And I don't know, just for funsies, they built another bridge just at the very edge of that pond. I mean, they could have gone around real easy and just, but they decided they, I think they just wanted something fun. So there's another bridge. Uh, so you go over this little bridge and then there's this long straightaway and then you basically get to the, the crossroad that basically is the last major crossroad before you leave our town. And so by the time I was out there, I was about three miles from my house. Um, so it's, it's about three miles from my house to, and they put up a stop sign because it stops and the, that's that's where they had stopped the trail at, at that point, which is, to this day, they still um, haven't gone on, but eventually I think it'll go on. And, um, and so there's a stop sign there. So basically it's three miles from my house to that stop sign. And so I got out there and uh, I mean, it was just, it was just the coolest thing. It, and so what I discovered, uh, when you get up at six, even in June, if you get up at six, you can see the sunrise. And the cool thing about being in Oklahoma and being out there, uh, you know, in the flat uh, away from the city is you can see every sunrise and you can just see every the clouds and, and everything. And so uh, I started to take some, some pictures of the wheat and of the sunrise. And by the time I got home, I don't know, there's, I, was, I had gotten bitten. I was bit by the bug. And so June 7th, 2015, I started walking. I think at that point I was walking. I, 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 I go, some, sometimes I walk and I might do that for a couple months and then I run and then I'll run for a couple months. And what it's gotten to now is I usually walk, speed walk in the winter because I've got on so many layers of clothing and then I run in the summer because it's lighter and I'm trying to lose weight for the summer. And so, uh, so that, but anyway, um, you know, by the time I got back, I had decided that that was the coolest thing ever. And I didn't think I was not going to be able to not do that again. So the next day I went out and the trail, when you get to the, the first bridge, uh, the trail goes off in a whole nother direction and goes to one of our, it's called Meadow Lake, and it's kind of a big lake, and there's a bunch of stuff over there. So that next morning, uh, I decided to go that direction because I'd never been to that direction. So I went that direction, and I took pictures and documented that, and I just thought it, this whole trail thing and being outdoors and being sunshine and seeing the sunrise, and I thought, man, this was the coolest thing ever. And so basically... For the last, officially now, the last seven years, I've, I'm still doing it. I have not stopped. So for seven, I'm now officially seven years in on walking or running the Enid Trail every morning. Now, so so this is what happened. So what was what, what really sucked about it was, um, so they got this really cool trail. I've got access to it. I can walk out my front door. I'm on the trail in just minutes. It was the coolest thing ever. Unfortunately, I think I think I only got to be on it for about a year and we got to the point where we needed to sell this house. And again, there's another podcast episode talking about the sell of the house and the moving back. So so we ended up moving across town to another area. And so I did not get to I, I had to leave that part of the trail. But like I said, the Enid Trail System is being built all over the city and they're just slowly connecting each section. And so when I got over to the other house, 
the we lived in an addition that was like it's kind of hard to describe but it was just its own little addition with just a circle of houses one entrance that you had you could only in, exit an entrance in the same street um, and it was just kind of off by itself and the road to get in was uh, a busy two lane and there was no there was no shoulder and no sidewalk and and so you if you you couldn't really it was dangerous to leave our neighborhood to walk somewhere else because you had to walk along the edge of the grass and there was speeding cars zipping by you fairly close to you and so um, so luckily about a two minute drive minute and a half to two minute drive from our house was another part of the trail that went around a little pond another little pond and so for um for six so we lived there well and i so so we lived at that other house uh for six years and so i had to do another part of the trail for that six years so so for many years probably four four to four and a half years i would go around so the the enid trail went all the way around this park and that lake and it was like a circle it was like a donut and it was a two mile donut and so i would have to go around it three times uh, to get my workouts in and so um and so that's what i would you know that's what i do but the cool thing about that was by that time i got the bug of taking sunrise photographs and so cool thing is when the sun right before the sun comes up the, the sky is usually uh, those wild pinks and oranges and reds and so you know you take about three or four pictures of that and then as the sun comes up the the lights hitting you and it's there's all these cool shadows well you take three or four so i was ending up with maybe 10 to 12 photos on mornings where the sunrises were really good now now there were a lot of uh, mornings where the sunrise was literally nothing not a cloud in the sky basically the sun would come up in the same spot and it was just the sun and so and there just wasn't really anything you know out of the ordinary or beautiful to take a picture so it wasn't like i was getting really great cool pictures every morning but the mornings i was getting cool pictures i was getting you know like i say at least a dozen pictures and so um, and so the, what was cool about that time period was the area around that lake was I could go down by that, or I'll call it a pond, I could go down by that pond, and especially on mornings when there was no wind at all, it would be like glass, and then when that sun would come up, or those colors would come up, they would reflect off of that pond, and I would get the, I mean, just the coolest, most beautiful pictures. And so I learned from trial and error and just doing it so many times how to take really great iPhone pictures. Um, and I mean, taking the sunrises really, really taught me a ton. And I will be doing a blog post or maybe even hear a, a podcast episode on uh, taking better pictures with your iPhone. And so what's really cool about that is that taking those pictures has kind of led to a whole another, you know, business thing. So I post those sunrise posts, I post a sunrise picture every morning on Enid Buzz. And so the, the people in my community have, you know, grown to really like those pictures. And, um, and then I decided I wanted to do a coffee table book of nothing but sunrise pictures from Enid, Oklahoma, which again is on my list of things to do. And I think I could probably sell uh, quite a few of those. So uh, I do even have a folder already picked out with a lot of the photos, even though I've added probably several, several hundred more since that. But um, I think what I'm gonna do is it'll be a coffee table book with 52 photos, basically one, for every week of the year. And then I, I'm trying to decide what type of a quote or whatever I want to go with each picture, or maybe just a title of each uh, sunrise photo. But so anyway, the cool thing about that is me exercising. Uh, it, it's a great time. So for the first bazillion year, I, I'm gonna get off track. For the first bazillion years that I did it, I listened to nothing. I just went, out with nothing and but my thoughts and it was a really great way to 
to think and to meditate and to come up with ideas. And then eventually, I think I went to, I got the AirPods came out and um, I got uh, music. And so for several years, I listened to music. And then podcasting got popular and came along. And so nowadays, I listen to an hour and a half worth of podcasts every morning. Um, but so, so, so not only am I getting out and getting uh, fresh air, uh, and exercise, but I'm getting to see sunrises, I'm getting to see animals, I'm getting to see beautiful skies, I'm taking pictures, so I'm making this huge collection of sunrise photos, and I even had a bank come to me at one point and purchase 12 of my photos, not all of them were sunrise, but and they used it as their bank calendar one year, and so um, so I have made money off of my photos, even though I am not a professional photographer, uh, but I do have professional cameras and I do take a lot of pictures, but I don't like specifically do it for money. Um, and so, um, and so that went on, like I say, I think I did that trail for about four and four and a half years. And then in that time, the road in, which is basically behind our house, but in front of our addition, they decided to widen and so it was going to go from a two lane to a four lane and then they were putting in walking trail sidewalks on both sides and so and now that took it did take a couple of years for that to get done and so the, probably the last either year and a half two years that we lived over there i actually got to go back on a trail i got to walk out my front door and uh, go on a trail and walk. And, and basically the trail didn't go as far over on that side. And so I spent a lot of time walking through uh, these really gorgeous neighborhoods uh, that were near my neighborhood. Uh, you know, I'd go through my neighborhood and, and several other neighborhoods. So I had, the, I had a whole you know, circuit that I did over there. And so um, I did that until uh, about a year ago. Uh, no, maybe six six months to a year ago, and then we moved back to this house, and so now I'm back on the original trail that I started on, and uh, I had my seven-year anniversary this week, and that's what sparked my idea for this episode. And so here's some some kind of quick stats, and these are all just just you know just real quick. They're they're not exact or anything, but uh, so I I. Depending on whether I run or I walk, my whatever device I'm using uh, that tells me how far I've gone, it's always different. It, even though I go the exact same distance, if I run it, it says I've gone five miles, five something, and if I walk it, it says I go almost seven miles. And so, so what I'm going to do is just average and say over over all the seven years, I've probably gone six miles average every morning. And so if you multiply all of that, the uh, six miles a day for seven years, um, and then you got, uh, and, and I literally never missed. I mean, I literally never miss. Uh, when we go on vacation, even on vacation, most of the time I will go, I will go running or walking uh, for an hour and a half, even if we're on vacation. Uh, and then in the summer, the last summer that we lived at the other place, I would actually go out twice a day. I would do my regular 90 minutes in the morning and then to, uh, to drop a little more weight for the summer and get my tan, uh, I would go in the afternoon for an hour. And so um, I was doing uh, two and a half hours a day. Uh, but not every day, uh, you know, maybe every other day. In this, and again, it was in the summer. If the sun was shining, I would do that. So, but anyway, you add, you multiply, you all know that, and it's about. So, in the last seven years, I I put in somewhere near fifteen thousand miles. And if you, you know, so I'm I'm definitely not overweight. Um, I'm probably still in some of the best shape I've ever been in. Um, I do keep, you know, most of my weight off. Um, I've gotten. I've been doing it for so long that for me to gain, you know, like six to eight pounds, I, I feel like I'm huge and bloated and, and immediately, you know, uh, get back on track of not eat, overeat, you know. And I don't overeat. I just sometimes I get into these spells where I snack a lot, you know, I'll, I'll eat 
you know, things when I shouldn't and, and stuff like that. So, so for me to gain, you know, like I say, six to eight pounds is, is huge. Um, my, my ideal weight for me where I feel super comfortable and everything just goes really good is 158 pounds. Um, and so, but that's like extreme, you know, that's like strict eating, you know, don't ever vary, uh, you know, that's really low body fat. Um, so probably to kind of eat, kind of average what I want and everything, I'd probably, I'm probably maybe 162. Um, but again, if I want to feel really thin and, and really get after it, um, I really enjoy being 100. 58. Uh, today, I think I weighed this morning and I'm 166 right now. So I did, I and I knew I was gaining some weight. I, I, I did get up to 170, um, which I haven't been up to 170 in quite a while. Uh, but it was literally, you know, one day I got up to 170 and I knew, knew it. And so immediately uh, I dropped two pounds and now I'm, I'm getting ready to go uh, to the lake and going skiing, uh, not this weekend, but Father's Day weekend. And so um, so I'm wanting to be somewhere around the 160, 162 mark and uh, have a tan. So I've been running, I've uh, been going in the afternoon to catch some sun. So anyway, back to my other deal, uh, 15, I've put in 15,000 miles and uh, that uh, all those years averages to about 2,500 mornings. And so, you know, if I'm going out in t for 2,500 mornings, now there are, again, there's going to be a lot of mornings where I don't take any sunrise pics because either it's cloudy um, or they're just, just, there's nothing but the sun. Um, but the mornings that I, that it's gorgeous and, and what you may not know, if you don't, if you've never seen or spent time with a lot of sunrises, um, a sunrise will change about three to five different looks from the time it starts to the time when the sun gets up high enough that it's no longer sunrise, it's just the sun. Um, you know, it'll go from a really cool uh, pink, orangish, red glow, and then as the sun comes up, it'll start to turn blue. But then there'll be these cool shadows all over the ground, and it'll be a really deep, rich orange, yellow sun. And then it, as it goes up a little more, it might get behind a cloud. And then there's these rays that come out, and then and it kind of goes through these different stages and phases. And each one, you know, I'm snagging probably six pictures of each one. So so I, I figure I've gotten. And if you and so on my um, Apple photo album, I've got over 74,000 photos. And so I'm figuring I've probably got at least 10,000 Enid sunrises in those 74,000 photos, if not more. But I'm just going to say, uh, you know, at least 10,000. And so, um, so basically that's what sparked this episode. So through this going outdoors, um, and uh, finding my love of the outdoors and, and the sunrise and having my, and the coolest thing is nowadays, uh, living in the generation that we do, uh, having a, an iPhone, you know, basically everywhere I go, uh, you know, I can snag uh, sunrise pictures, sunset pictures, you know, all the time because I've always got my phone with me. And so, and I mean, literally for seven years, you know, the only times that I don't, you know, when, if I'm in Enid, the only times that I haven't gone is, you know, if there's a, you know, a severe thunderstorm and it's just, it's just downpouring, I'm not going to go out. Although I have several times, as many times as I've gone out, I have been caught. Uh, sometimes I take a chance if there's a storm, you know, 20 miles away, I'll head out and then it moves in quicker than I thought, or a new one will pop up. And, and I have been caught in the rain before and been drenched. But if it's, if it's just downpouring when, I, when I'm ready to go, if I don't want to try to wait till later, um, I will do a stationary bike. Um, and then in the winter, uh, temperature pretty much has never kept me from going out on the trail. Uh, ice has, snow has, and wind. Um, you know, I can, I hate, I hate, I hate the wind, but I will put up with a pretty good 20 mile an hour north wind at, you know, zero degrees um, because I just wear layers and I, you know, put something over my face and, and I just go. But, um, 
you know, every now and then there'll be, you know, 35 mile an hour wind and cold, or there'll be ice on the ground. And so, but there are very few more, there were very, you know, I, if I'd have thought about it, I'd have documented all of this, but I, I bet there, I bet out of seven years, let's say each year, I bet there couldn't have been four four to six mornings out of the whole year each year that I did not was not able to get out on the trail or ch- just chose not to. Um, even when I'm sick, um, a lot of times I'll lay around and then even when I had COVID, I thought, you know, I don't feel really good, but I'm going to go walking and see if I feel better. Uh, now, eventually, now that was, I, that was probably the longest stretch um, that I hadn't uh, gone out on the trail was when I did have COVID. Um, I think I might have skipped maybe four, four days in a row of not going out on the trail when I had COVID. Um, so, um, but, you know, way consistent for the last seven years. Um, it has been a blast. Um, I would highly recommend that uh, if you guys aren't exercising at all, that you exercise. And it's just, it's just now, a, it's, a, it's a part of my life. I mean, it's, it's like, you know, most people get up and drink coffee. Well, I, I don't drink coffee. I've never drank coffee. So for me, I get up and I exercise. You know, it's, I get up and exercise just as, it's just a, as much a part of my routine as people getting up and drinking coffee or getting up and reading the paper or watching the news. I just, I get up and I listen to podcasts while I'm out exercising. So, um, as I, you know, I'm 59 and I can tell you that watching my mom and my father-in-law, um, you know, I highly recommend trying to stay in shape because when you hit 80 years old and 80 seems to be kind of the, you know, looking at all my friends, parents and my mom, uh, that 80 year old mark is when things really start catching up with you. And you, if you have not led an active life, if you've gotten overweight, if you haven't kept your muscles strong, uh, about 80, you're going to wear out and you're not going to be walking. Um, you know, by the time you hit 82, you're going to have canes and walkers. And now the people that stay in shape and walk, you know, um, you know, if you're healthy, you know, you're going to be fine. You're going to have, you know, your, you know, hurt and, you know, it's, things are going to hurt as you get older, but, um, at least you're going to be able to cruise. Uh, my goal uh, you know, my dream would be to be out on the trail at 102 years old and drop dead on the trail. I mean, that, uh, that if you want to know how I want to go, that would be it. Uh, a beautiful June, June 7th. Um, I'm not sure what that year is when I turn 102, but uh, that year on a June 7th, on a beautiful, bright blue, sunrisey morning uh, to be out on the trail. Uh, you know, that, that is my intent is to get out on the trail uh, until the day I drop or, you know, just physically or mentally uh, am not able to get out on the trail. Another uh, kind of a cool deal. Uh, so my mom passed away uh, at 81. My father-in-law passed away at 81. Um, and so out on the trail last year, I started running into this older gentleman that was riding a bike and he, we would see each other every morning. So eventually one morning he stopped me and we talked and um, his name was Stan. And he was last year, I believe he was either 80 or 81. And um, he was talking about how he was trying to stay in shape. And so he was, actually he was walking originally and then he switched to a bike and then uh, after a couple of months, he disappeared, and I, had, I hadn't seen him for a long time, and I thought, you know, something, maybe his health had, had gotten him down or something, but I did run into him, actually, uh, last week, and uh, he had been, he'd, his leg was bothering him, so I think he quit riding the bike, and he was walking in our local mall, because they uh, sometimes open that up, and they would let... Uh, seniors walk because it's indoors and you know they're out of the weather and so he was he had been doing that but uh, then I finally caught him out on the trail so but again uh, he's 81 uh, still going strong because he's out there exercising so it's just one of those deals where you have to make a decision you know do you guys want to stay healthy um, for me, you know, this is part of the show because um, staying healthy, working out, listening to podcasts, 
uh, being able to meditate. And a lot of times when I go out and I play 70s music, it gives me ideas for my 70s book. It gives me ideas for my website, for the podcast. Um, just going out and exercising, uh, it clears your mind. It, it just does so much, uh, you know, and I know the cool thing is another reason you need to work for yourself. I work for myself so I can do that. Like today, today's a prime example of working for myself. So today I get up at 6.20, I hit the trail. It was a beautiful, and I think that's why I, it, it dawned on me to do this episode. And plus it, I just went over the one year anniversary. But um, so I went out, I, I ran this morning and um, ran until eight o'clock came back and was doing my work, got my pretty much all the work I needed done up until a certain point. And uh, it was blue skies, a light wind, which is Oklahoma has gone through a lot of wind this year. I think we're breaking records on the amount of wind that we've had. And it just, it can, it can literally wear you out. Uh, so tired of the wind. So I, I was looking outside and I was like, you know, Lately, we just haven't had sunshine and low wind and uh, you know warm temperatures, and so I hopped back into my tennis shoes and my shorts, and um, I did another hour, ran and did another hour. Um, I'm starting to darken up. I don't know if you can really see, but uh, my you know so basically, once I get out on the trail, I take off my shirt and uh, trying to even out my tan from my farmer's farmer's tan on my arms. But um, so, so today I got in two and a half hours, but uh, you know, did that hour in the afternoon. But, and so now it's, it's nighttime and um, I'm doing this podcast. So I'm working at night. I did some work just before I got on the podcast. As soon as I get off and upload the podcast, um, I'll have work to do for my Enid Buzz and some of my other stuff. So, you know, so when you work for yourself and you kind of work all day long, you know, you can take a couple, you know, several breaks throughout the day and do the things that you want to do. If you need to run errands or you want to go on a run or a jog or take the dog for a walk or go see your kids in a play or, or something like that. So I, I tell people, you know, the number one reason to work for yourself is not for the money, it's for the freedom. Uh, just absolute freedom to basically do what you want to do and when you want to do it. That's the key when you want to do it. Um, so uh, I would highly recommend you guys uh, become entrepreneurs and work for yourself at some stage if you can. And uh, you too can get on the trail. So you guys let me know. Do you guys uh, exercise? What, how old are you? Uh, how long have you been exercising? Uh, so, so, so as of today, and I think I've talked about it probably on one of the episodes, so I, I do an hour and a half, basically an hour and 40 minutes of trail, either running or walking in the morning. Then I get back, I do some work, and then right before I go in and I do a shower, I do um, at least 100 push-ups. Um, I do 50 arm curls, uh, two sets of 25 with 25 pound dumbbells. Um, and then I do uh, a bunch of squats, uh, either slow or fast squats with no weight. Um, don't want to um, I'm not taking any chances with, you know, doing anything with my back these days. And so, um, and basically that's it. That's the only uh, weightlifting I do anymore. But, um, you know, and I'm not big, but, um, you know, I'm in shape. And so uh, at 59, uh, next week I will be kneeboarding and, and, you know, just doing all kinds of stuff in the water and I won't have any problem. But, uh, and then last two weeks ago, three weeks ago, we were at Disney World and I think we were doing about seven to 10 miles a day uh, in the parks, you know, no problem. So, so staying in shape, uh, it, there's just so many benefits. Um, I don't smoke, I pretty much don't drink, don't do drugs, um, that, that really helps. Um, my eating, yeah, you know, I don't overeat, you know, so I never go in. Uh, I, I hate going to buffets because I know I'm only going to eat one plate of food. Um, so it's kind of a waste of money. So I don't, I never overeat. I don't go ordering two cheeseburgers anywhere. Um, but my downfall is so, and I don't eat breakfast. So basically I eat, you know, for me to maintain my ideal 158 pounds, it's basically uh, skip breakfast, 
which I've done for decades now, um, eat, a, eat a good lunch and eat a good dinner, you know, two meals a day. And that's pretty much how I've stayed, you know, at 158 or somewhere around that. Now, where I get in trouble is maybe right around before the holidays, you know, a uh, couple points, I'd start eating a, a package of peanuts in the morning. And then, you know, if, we, if I had a fruit pie, so, so, my, so my meals, though, are sometimes bad. You know, it's like uh, frozen yogurt and a cherry pie, you know, and a bag of peanuts. You know, that's my dinner. But, you know, is that really worse than a greasy cheeseburger and greasy fries? You know, even though it sound, it's, a, it's a lot of sugar. Um, I don't know what, what's worse for me, the, the greasy high cholesterol food or the sugary food. I know they're both bad, but um, so I, I'm not a good eater, but I'm not an overeater. And so, um, so, so when I do get in trouble again, it's, it's from snacking. It's middle of the afternoon, you know, seeing a, a bunch of candy laying around because my wife fills up all these little bowls with holiday candy, you know. And then sometimes I just, I just I'm like, yeah, screw it. I'm just going to eat what I want, uh, you know, snack wise for, you know, a month or two. And then I'll fill that six to eight pounds come on and I'll be like, okay, I cannot stand this. And uh, it, then I just get back on on the wagon and and I'm, I can pretty much take it off. Uh, but I, I do want to uh, stress again, the older I get, the harder and longer it takes to, to get rid of that six to eight pounds unless you go super hardcore and, uh, you know, almost starve yourself. But um, I'm not going to do that. And I would say uh, here's kind of a thought or a tip for you. As you get old, the older you get... It's the food that you eat that's going to keep you thinner than the amount of workout that you're going to do. So um, if you're eating fairly bad and a lot, you can work out every minute of the day till the cows come home and you're, you're not going to lose weight. So you've really got to start concentrating on your, uh, what you're eating. I don't want to say diet, but your, your diet meaning the things that you eat, um, not like a diet as in losing weight. But um, just be aware of, of what you eat. And, and so the way that you eat when you're 59 or 81 is going to come from the habits that you formed when you're 24 and 35 and 44. And um, so if, you're, if you grow up and, and get older and you're in the habit of overeating and you know eating six times a day and having a huge breakfast and eating at 10 o'clock at night, um, you're going to carry those habits uh, as you get older and you're just not going to be as healthy. So um, so anyway, just I would love to encourage everybody out there to try to stay healthy uh, as long as you can. Uh, this is your one body. This is your one life. And uh, my plan is to be like this and be doing this until the day I'm gone. You know, I don't, I don't want to get to the point where, you know, I've got 10 years of sitting in a chair not being able to go outdoors and not being able to get up and walk on my own. I want, I want, you know, I may be slower, I may be whatever, but uh, I, I plan on, you know, going, going, going. So anyway, you guys hit me up, shags at shaggyduck.com. You can email me there. Uh, you can go to curtistucker.com. That is the blog. Um, I think I've got some links there. You can leave me a comment there. Guys, uh, sign up at Patreon if you want to. Uh, would appreciate that. But uh, would love to hear from you guys and know what you guys are doing to stay in shape, what your thoughts are on working out, what things have worked for you or not worked for you guys. Um, if you guys have turned a morning habit into a business or a side gig or or anything like that, let me know. Would love to hear all of your entrepreneur or side gig stories uh, and can share those. But um, still trying to figure this podcast out. Um, I don't know still exactly what I'm doing, but rather than just sitting there, you know, every week wondering, okay, what am I going to talk about? What's my subject going to be? What's my podcast going to be? What's the name of my podcast going to be? I basically just threw this together, a Shaggy Duck Life, and, and I'm just recording every week. I'm trying to record every week, you know, uh, when I can. And uh, slowly, if I could get some feedback from you guys, um, you know, I, I know I can see the numbers. You guys are downloading the, uh, the episode, so I appreciate that. But uh, would love a little feedback. What episodes 
What subjects do you guys, uh, would you find interesting? Um, you know, I would love to share, you know, I don't want to, it's kind of turned into about me, but I don't want it to be about me, but I would like to use what I've learned to teach you guys. And so what, what maybe do I know that uh, I could talk about or teach you guys what subjects or, you know, top 10 lists or, or whatever. And so um, I would love to hear your ideas there. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep rambling on about this. This is kind of my personal journal. Uh, another reason that this is kind of fun to do is because uh, these podcasts will be recorded uh, and stored hopefully somewhere and then maybe eventually my grandkids can like watch this YouTube video or listen to this podcast and say hey wow that's my grandpa and he did this or he did that and you know I really like doing that and you know maybe there'll there'll be characteristics that we both have that they'll be like wow that's pretty cool you know that I might have inherited this from my my grandpa so so real quick this I haven't done this before um, if you are my grandkid and you are watching this episode, uh, hey, grandkid, grandson, granddaughter, I don't know uh, if you are Piper or Cheney's child, but uh, and I don't know if I've met you. Hopefully I've met, uh, and another reason why I'm staying in shape is so I can meet my grandkids and know them uh, as they get older. But if for some weird reason I didn't make it uh, and you're watching this and I'm gone and you've never met me, um, hello, it's nice to meet you. I'm uh, your grandpa, Curtis Tucker, age 59, and this is my podcast and welcome to the show. So I'm gonna get out of here. I appreciate you guys so much and uh, we will see you on the next episode of A Shaggy Duck Life. <laughs>